All right, boys, we're back with another one, and my audio wasn't working in this clip, so anyway, what I'm showing you guys here is the reason I'm extending these pipe stakes out. They're just too narrow. I've done a few loads where the pipe was stacking up too tall, and I even had one where the pipe racks, uh, which are what the pipe sits on out at the oil, the rig sites, um, was they were too close to each other. They're not stacking up right. So we're just basically cutting right there. You can see in the video, cutting that off, moving it over and then splicing in this piece I'm holding, or at least, I mean, putting that piece up on the top. You'll see when I'm done, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, but anyway, that'll give me another six inches and that way the loads won't be so tall. So in the last video I said that the having the pipe stakes protruding out from the side of your trailer was illegal. Technically it is legal. I will show you the literature for that in this next clip. Um, I'm still not going to do it just because, well, you'll see why. The specific rule that pertains to the pipe stake holders protruding out from the side of the trailer is not found in here. I looked everywhere for it. I'll tell you where it is found and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that you have to go through all these hurdles just to find something this basic because I mean, if you get pulled over, you're not going to be able to prove this legal with this thing. And my main fear was that if I do get pulled over and am given an inspection, which they always do now, no matter what, doesn't matter what you're pulled over for, they might not know that specific rule and you're not going to be able to prove it to them with this because it's not in there. I found it and I printed it out and I don't have to worry about it because mine don't stick out, but I'm just doing this um, just so I know it. And uh, hey, if somebody gets some help out of this, then that's good. But you have to look up. Um, I'll just show you some screenshots here. So you're going to type in list of CFR titles. CFR stands for Code of Federal Regulations. And then the first thing right there, I clicked on ECFR titles. Then you're going to click on Title 23 Highways. Then you're going to, going to click on Subchapter G, Engineering and Traffic Operations. And then you're going to click on Part 658. Then you're going to click on 658.16. This is where the pipe stakes come into play. All non-property carrying devices, I'm assuming that means freight or components thereof, um, at the front of a semi-trailer or trailer or that do not extend more than three inches beyond each side or the rear of the vehicle or that do not extend more than 24 inches beyond the rear of the vehicle and are needed for loading or unloading. So as long as it's for load support on the front, back, or both sides, that's how I'm interpreting it. All right, guys, I also did some digging on the state level and I called up my FMCSA field office and they directed me to the uh, Commercial Vehicle Safety Division of the Highway Patrol, which is Troop S. There's a phone number right there, 405-521-6060. That's for Oklahoma. I'm not 100% sure if the guy knew the title, but I read him the federal provision, which is this one. And he found one that was on an, uh, the Oklahoma, the state level. And it's Title 47 of the Oklahoma Statutes, Chapter 14-103. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the federal one. The way it's written is very similar. And I'll show it to you right here. All right, so the first thing you got to do is type in Title 47, Oklahoma Statutes, Chapter 14-103. And then it'll take you to this page. You just click on Oklahoma Statutes right there in the middle. And then next page, you, it'll take you to Title 47. Click on that, which is Motor Vehicles. And then here's the next page, which you have to download. And then you'll have to scroll to the corresponding page. You have to type it in or you're going to be scrolling forever. And then here it is. Width, height, and length of vehicle and load. Except as otherwise pro provided for by this chapter, no vehicle with or without a load shall have a total outside width of or in excess of 100 two inches it says right here just like the federal regulation you can have tire bulge okay so here's the important part number four pins used as a safety precaution or as a load assisting device if the pins do not extend the overall width of the vehicle beyond nine feet the state of oklahoma hereby declares it has determined in accordance with 23 cfr which is the federal regulation i just went over 
that such pins are necessary for the safe and efficient operation of a motor vehicle. I'm assuming um, pipe stakes would fall under that category, but I'm still not going to do it. And that's mainly because the officer might not see things the way you see things and say if he does write you a ticket, good luck trying to fight that and trying to go through the data queue challenge if you have to do that, which is an extreme pain in the ass. It's just a lost cause. You might as well just pay the damn ticket and forget about it. All right, so the first thing we got to do is cut this pipe stake. We're going to cut it right here. And then what's left is going to be this piece. And we're going to move it over and down where it's even with the bottom here. And then this piece right here, we're going to weld on the top of it because it's going to be a little short. We also have some 3 8 plate, flat metal, flat bar, whatever you want to call it. We're going to weld it right there. And then once all that's done, this is quarter inch. Weld this across all of it. I want this stuff to be stout. So there we go. So the next part of this I'm not a huge fan of, but the way that my pipe stakes are right now, even with the boards that come up five inches off the deck, and that elevates the pipe off of the trailer floor, but not enough um, because it hits on this angle. I gotta cut it right here, unfortunately, and that way the pipe will just roll right over that all the way to the pipe stake. Well, my little Dewalt grinder bit the dust, boys. So we went back to Lowe's and uh, got a little Craftsman this time. It was about half the price of uh, Dewalt, about $45 for that. And I like this one because it's got a longer handle on it. That's nice. Keeps your hand farther away from the blade. And then I got this, um, a little chop saw. We ain't playing now. And you know, my dad gave me this a while back. This thing right here is serious. Makita, I don't even know what size blade that is. It's like nine or 10 inches, huge. I just don't want to use this thing, man. This grinder right here will straight up ruin your credit. I mean, this grinder here will uh, bring you bread with no butter, you know? This grinder will, uh, it'll turn off the hot water on you while you're taking a nice shower. Yeah, 
it's bad. So we got our unwrapped right here, boys. Okay, these two are rated almost at the same power. This is actually seven and a half amps. This is seven amps. So you get more with this, half the price, and they actually include a grinding blade. I mean, that's six, seven dollars worth. And they include the tool to uh, loosen the blade off with, or loosen your disc off. I don't think DeWalt does that. I could be wrong. But the main thing I like about this, look at me, I'm doing a review video now. DeWalt just doesn't have a good handle down here. You know, I got big hands and look at that. I can't even wrap it around there. Imagine if, you know, you got smaller hands. That's a pain. This thing, put this handle on real quick. This is much better. See that? And you can lock it into place just like DeWalt. Get down to business, boys. First thing I do with these, take this stupid shield off. We're gonna upset the safety freaks. You know, don't wanna take off the shield. Well, it gets in the way all the time. Kaboom. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. don't know what I did different this time on this weld but that right there that's probably the best weld I've ever done
That looks really good. Let's flip this thing over and do the other side. Well, it's all filled up now. We did about six, maybe seven passes. And then uh, now we can put this three eighths inch thick plate on here and uh, weld it all up. All right, so we're coming along on this, slow but steady. And on these welds like this right here, you wanna make sure you bevel that, you know, cut out a little valley. That way the weld will have something to fill into. Well, we're, uh, I don't know, halfway through, something like that. We got to put the, this piece on here. And then we're going to put this piece across. Of course, we got to cut it a little bit. And then do the same on the other side, and we will have one finished pipe steak. <laughs> All right, boys, this is way more work than I thought it was going to be, but that's how this channel works. We about got one pipe steak done. These things are taking, I don't know, three, four hours each. Well, here's what I got done so far. So there's that end. And uh, it took forever to fill in all that right there. That was, oh my God, that was a lot. And then um, we're about ready to weld on that. And then I guess we'll have to cut this piece to fit down here and put it kind of right across there like that. Overkill, boys, that's what I'm all about. Overkill, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm paranoid about stuff like this breaking. All right, so it is the next day. We got this one finished last night. Um, I got the angle cut at top. That helps out for whenever they lower down the pipe and it kind of, you know, works it into place. You can see the difference in the this one and my old ones. See the pipe now will just roll right over that all the way to the pipe stake whereas before and you can see it was hidden right there and it wasn't it just wasn't rolling over far enough now it's going to be plenty wide and plenty strong too these are a little heavier than the old ones but not too bad so i guess the next thing we'll do is uh finish up these other three and then we'll get back back with you and show you how these look up on red and white or well the trailer. I don't have a nickname for the trailer. Stepchild, whatever you want to call it. So we're clearing out the garage here. Oh, the old mower died. There she goes. And uh, just putting this fan up and getting it ready to where it'll kind of pull out some of those fumes, um, I guess. Putting my pipe sticks up on these saw horses and uh, uh, get, get to work on these. Cherry red, that's the color I picked. Rust-Oleum is the brand and I just put two coats on it and called it good and I shouldn't have put them at an angle like this you'll see why here in a minute see I lift it up on these pipe stakes to spray paint where they're resting on the saw horses and that created a slippery slope that did not work in my favor as you'll see right here one fell and it was like dominoes. Yeah, I'm lucky I didn't uh, break a toe. It was pretty bad. It was really loud. My wife came out there to make sure, um, you know, I wasn't underneath a pile of metal. But hey, I, I survived. I had one of my dad's moments, except for I didn't get seriously hurt. So big difference. But hey, while they're laying on the floor, might as well finish up my paint and call it good. You know, I can get a little paint on the floor. Who's going to care about that? So I thought I would run out to the trailer while there's still daylight and put one of these pipe stakes up just to see how it looks. And uh, yeah, it came out pretty good. You can see right here, I mean, it's probably one inch from the very outside of the trailer so nice i like that that's a good look and uh yeah it turned out really nice nice and solid hell i might even run like a reflective strip vertically down the side of it that looked pretty cool all right boys i guess uh that's everything i think we're good to go now on these pipe stakes came out pretty good boys hey don't forget to subscribe share comment do all the things or uh or don't you know it's all good 
we'll catch you on the next one guys thanks for watching the video